to begin this hearing as we begin all our hearings uh, with the mission statement of the uh, Government Oversight and Reform Committee. We exist to secure two fundamental principles. First, Americans have a right to know that the money Washington takes for them is well spent. And second, Americans deserve an efficient, effective government that works for them. Our duty on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee is to protect these rights. Our solemn responsibility is to hold government accountable to taxpayers because taxpayers have a right to know what they get from their government. We will work tirelessly in partnership with Citizens Watchdogs to deliver the facts to the American people and bring genuine reform to the Federal bureaucracy. This is the mission of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee. At this point, I will uh, start with my opening statement, then we will go to Mr. Lynch for his, and then we will uh, start with our witnesses. Much has changed since 1949 when the general schedule was established to classify Federal workers according to their job duties and to assign pay. The minimum wage was 70 cents an hour, and the average yearly wage was just under $3,000, and the Federal Government's workforce consisted mainly of clerical staff. Sixty-five years later, the Government continues to classify and pay 80 percent of its workforce using the same antiquated system, ignoring the realities of the current labor market. It is no wonder we continue to bear the burden of inefficient and unacceptable uh, and unaccountable Federal Government. Uh, grade inflation without a corresponding change in a worker's duty has become a common uh, place current in Federal Government. Over the last 15 years, the number of Federal workers occupying positions in the top grade, GS-12 to GS-15, has increased by 30 percent, with salaries ranging from $75,000 to $157,000 a year. More than 99 percent of the GS workers are given a 3 percent raise based primarily on the passage of time. It is hard to see the fairness in the current system and bureaucratic culture that it fosters. It allows workers to simply show up for work and stick around for years and get wages when those go over and beyond to serve the taxpayers and do a great job are awarded uh, over the poor performers. No private sector company could survive if its HR system was run this way. Even Federal employees themselves recognize the flaws in the current system. I spoke with the lo local union leaders at the Corpus Christi Army Depot in my district, and they agreed the current GS personnel system is outdated and needs reforming. In addition, the recent OPM workforce survey uh, stated that half the Federal workforce has reported uh, that pay raises did not depend on performance, while only 22 percent believe that performance and pay are linked. Way to motivate people, Uncle Sam. In its budget request for FY 2015, President Obama stated the Federal personnel system remains inflexible and outdated and that, quote, the pay and classification system needs to be updated, end quote. He further stated, quote, an alternative, cost-effective system needs to be developed that will allow the government to compete for and reward top talent while rewarding performance, close quotes. The President and I could not agree more on this issue. Unfortunately, as with many things, as President said, the sound bites are good, but actually implementing the policy never seems to happen as advertised. The OPM's uh, strategic plan promises the agency will serve as a thought leader in research and data-driven human resources management and policy decision making. The President's budget for the OPM states that it would permit the OPM uh, programs to prioritize their activities in support of the OPM strategic plan. Alas, neither the strategic plan or the President's budget specifically addresses OPM's work to reform the pay classification system. Accordingly, I look forward to learning what efforts, if any, are underway within the OPM. Uh, the Chief of Human Capital Officers Council and the Administration have established labor management councils to craft a proposal for submission to this committee that would modernize the GS. Such a program and such a proposal should be completed promptly and include provisions to strengthen the link between pay and performance. Achieving common sense to how the Federal Government classifies, evaluates, and compensates its workforce uh, will bring needed accountability and, I believe, much improved performance in the Federal Government. As we work to ensure a more efficient, cost-effective government to reduce the burden on American taxpayers, it is reasonable to expect uh, the Federal workforce policy reflect modern HR practices and not one out of the 1940s. And we will now recognize our panel of witnesses. The Honorable Kathleen Archuleta is the Director of the United States Office of Personnel Management. 
The Honorable David J. Devine is Senior Scholar at the Fund for American Studies and former Director of the Office of Personnel Management. Uh, Dr. Robert Goldenkopf is, strategic, uh, is Director of Strategic Issues for the Government Accountability Office. Ms. Patricia Niehaus is President of the Federal Managers Association, and Mr. David Cox, Sr. is National President of the American Federation of Government Employees. Pursuant to com committee rules, all witnesses will be sworn before they testify. Would you please rise and raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Let the record reflect that all witnesses have uh, answered in the affirmative. Thank you, and please be seated. Five minutes. I, I appreciate the passion that you have for uh, your members in the Federal workforce, and uh, I do think we need to be looking for uh, ways to work the budget. That does, you, unfortunately, it does look like the Federal workforce are the go-to people to uh, balance the budget on, but that is where the bulk of the Federal dollars are spent, so that is why we are looking. I do want to point out, you mentioned most Federal employees have a defined benefit plan, and you were comparing that to the private sector. Of the Fortune 100 companies now, I think only three of them still have a defined uh, defined benefit plan. Everybody has gone to a defined contribution plan. I just I didn't, I, I don't want to, I just wanted to point out that fact. I mean, I want to go on with some, with some more uh, questions. Uh, Mr. Goldenkopf, in uh, your written testimony, uh, you talk about uh, the wait times at the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, management of oil and gas operations, at the Department of Interior, uh, IT management, at Social Security, acquisition management at uh, DOD and Homeland Security, all share a common problem, the breakdown of personnel problems, uh, personnel policies such as performance uh, management. How do we how do we fix this? How do we create a, a system that uh, rewards productivity, and we don't, but don't in the process create something like in the VA where there are checklists that uh, encourage employees to keep paper lists so they meet their goals? How, how do we deal with this in a Federal environment where we have fairness and due process claims? Uh, and you know, in the private sector, it you just fire somebody who you think's cheating. Uh, and how, how do we how do we fix this? How do we do this in the federal government? The short answer is it's complicated, <laughs> but you know the, it has to be addressed systemically. And one of the problems is is that you know in the past we've tried to address it piecemeal, looking at the pay system, looking at the classification system, looking at the performance management system. The thing is it's all interrelated. It has to be treated as as a matrix, as a, as a system, and we're just not doing that. For example, starting with the classification system, uh, you know, we're tr it, as we all know, it's 65 years old. We're trying to accomplish the Federal government's mission by essentially driving a Studebaker when we need smart cars. And you know, so that is, that's, you know, if we start with that, but it also, the Federal classification system affects so many other, other things, um, pay and performance management. Uh, there are skills gaps. And so all the different stakeholders, OPM, Congress, um, labor unions, um, different interest groups really need to come together and figure out what are the problems, what can be addressed by agencies administratively, what needs to be addressed by statute, set priorities, set time frames, and that is the first start. So let, let's ask Ms. Archuleta, where, where are you guys going on this? And, uh, what, what are you all doing and what do you all need to get there? Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. The President, in, since 2012, has, has recommended that there be established a, uh, a panel to our commission to, res to review civil service with a specific purpose of reform. I think the GAO's statement is a very important one in that it in looking at the civil service system, you, have, you can't look at it piece by piece. You have to look at classification. You have to look at pay. You have to look at performance. OPM right now is, uh, is, stands ready and is willing to help in every one of those major areas, but we recognize that the system that was established 65 years ago does need reform, and that is why the President has suggested that a commission be established uh, to 
uh, look at this very carefully and to assess all of the impacts of putting this whole system. Well, is that uh, something you all could do yourselves without having to do a commission uh, or, or, you know, at least come up with some to start with? Uh, we would hope that we could join with uh, Congress, with uh, academics, with, uh, uh, with experts, with labor and management to take a look at this together. Great. And, and Ms. Niehaus, I want to I want to get back to the initial question I asked Mr. Uh, Golenkov. What what do you see as a solution to the system of creating goals oriented, uh, a results oriented uh, compensation system, and not uh, not creating an incentive for fraud like we uh, have apparently seen at the VA? Well, I agree with Mr. Goldenkopf that it has to be a, a wholesale system. I mean, you have to address every aspect of the system in order to bring it up to date and make it more, more usable and more responsive. Um, and I think that oversight is, is the answer. Um, All right. Well, I see that I am out of time. I think for, for my five minutes here about you know, working for the government and passion for your job, I have always told my children, Pick a job doing something that you like, and then it isn't like work. It worked for me. Once I got fed up with being a lawyer, I went and became a computer consultant. Computers do what you tell them. Your clients as lawyers don't always. Uh, and then I got, you know, got, got interested in uh, politics, went into uh, talk radio and wanted to make a difference and realized I was kind of a brick thrower on the radio. Maybe I would do better. Uh, running for office, and, and here I am. I don't think anybody as a child sits and says, well, I want to be a bureaucrat in the Federal Government. But that is what they end up. What, what robs the Federal workforce of their passion? I mean, you, know, you go to work for the EPA because you care about the environment. You study forestry and go to work for the National Park Service because you love the outdoors. You, know, you go to work at the Corpus Christi Army Depot because you are good with your hands, you want to help the military, you want to you know, fix helicopters. You go to work at the VA because you want to help people. But all of a sudden, you get caught and mired up in something. I, I don't understand how uh, some of the folks at the VA uh, get to sleep at night knowing what a backlog there is. Why aren't, why aren't they saying, I'm going to stay an extra hour, I'm going to work a little bit harder and get this uh, backlog done? What kind of system have we created where just doing the barest minimum uh, is acceptable? And I'm, I'm going to start with Ms. Niehaus and, and Mr. Cox. What, what have we done to rob the people of the, that are working of, of the passion to do the best job possible? I have to say that part of it is feeling, as um, Mr. Cox said earlier, that the Federal employee is the ATM for the budget system. Um, that is tremendously demotivating for employees to feel like they are not being recognized. It is also, I think, demotivating for an employee to be in a pass-fail performance system. If you have an employee who is a stellar employee, who still has that passion, who works that extra hour, who goes that extra mile, and the person sitting next to them comes in and does the job they are paid to do, and they do it well, but they just do what they are paid to do. They don't go that extra mile. They get exactly the same performance see, rating. The they get the same paycheck. So in the private sector, when it comes time to tighten the belt, and I have had to do that a couple of times in, in my computer company, you know, the, the, the person that gets to stay is the person that works the extra hour. And so, Mr. Devine, do you want to address that question uh, a little bit? Do you have any thoughts on that now that you are kind of on the outside looking in? Yeah, I think it goes back to performance. I mean, the, the, I know I live in the Washington area. I mean, I know many, many Federal employees. I mean, they know that system doesn't work. They know that if you perform well, you don't get paid better. All right? the, the, 2013 be federal, yeah, the, the 2013 Federal Employees Viewpoint Survey found that only 28 percent of Federal employees agreed their work unit uh, takes steps to deal with poor performers uh, who cannot or will not improve. That is a decrease from 2012 results. Uh, I mean, uh, Ms. Archuleta, how can, is there anything the OPM can do to help? I think the EVS also showed that the employees, when asked about would they, were, they willing to, were they willing to do even more, the fact of the matter is that I believe, and I have 
I have literally spent the last eight months talking to employees across the country, is that they are very engaged. Are they satisfied with pay? Do they have concerns about how they are evaluated? That is true. And OPM is working very hard with top managers to make sure that they understand their responsibilities in appraising performance and, and certainly the issues of classification. However, I, when I speak to employees and talk about the work that they do, I do see that passion. I do see that commitment to what they are uh, what they have taken on. And I would be very reluctant to paint a, use a broad brush to paint all employees uh, with one color of enthusiasm. I, I believe that there is great enthusiasm among government employees yeah. so, so who let, every day provide service to the American people. Let, let's talk a little bit about the, some of the uh, comparisons are drawn between what you can make in the private sector and what is made in the uh, federal government, and it is hard to compare apples to apples. Federal government, a lot of the jobs have you know, a defined uh, benefits retirement plan, which, as we said, no, is very uh, uncommon in the private sector. You do have a lot more due process and pr protections and, and, and job security uh, there. So it, I guess it is difficult to get an, an apples to apples comparison. What, is there something that can be structured to where we are paying the employees what they could get? I am reminded, I had a, a receptionist that worked for me for, for a very short period of time, because she got mad that I paid the computer techs who went out and fixed computers more than I paid her, and uh, she, was, she was mad about that. Well, they had a higher skill set and were doing a different job. It was what, what the marketplace would. So how can we create a system where we are competitive? Uh, or similar to the private sector and compare, the, compare those apples to apples, make sure we are getting the compensation we need, but not overpaying them when we take in all of the perks that are associated with the government job. Uh, I believe that um, all of your panelists have, have mentioned the fact that we really need to take a look at the whole system. And it is not just about pay, but certainly the appraisal for failure, the classification. I think there, it is time after 65 years to begin to look at all parts of the civil service reform with input from, as, from the Congress, from the President and his administration, from labor and uh, experts in the field. I think there is time to step back and take a look at that. In the meantime, we need to uh, to um, enforce and to support the system that we have right now. And that is OPM's job to make sure that managers are held responsible, employees understand their responsibilities, and that there are performance management tools available to both so that they can uh, uh, perform to the level that the American people expect. All right. Thank you very much. And I